This is the Champion 2500 watt dual fuel, good old fashioned politically incorrect fossil fuel burning generator, then yes, it is in an appealing shade of banana yellow. It is capable of running off either gasoline or propano. And it's 2500 watts in terms of starting watts. Now, actual running watts is 1850 watts off gasoline and I believe around 1650 off propane. You get a little bit less power output if you're running off of propane. We've been traveling with a 3100 watt gasoline champion generator. That unit actually produces around 2800 running watts of electricity. Whereas this unit off gasoline will produce about 1000 watts less. It is also parallel capable. So you can link two of these units together for more electricity if you need it. In the box, you'll receive a handful of items that you need to get started. For example, some 10W30 motor oil, approximately 17 ounces of oil. You get a little USB charger that you can plug into your DC port. And you also get a propane hose with a regulator and you can attach this little bracket to it. This generator comes equipped with a bunch of stickers, some of which are unique to the California market. I have partially de-stickered the generator and I will continue de-stickering because I like really a kind of a clean, uncluttered appearance on the generator. But let's take a look at the main control panel and you'll see you have a couple of buttons. One is a 20 amp reset button and on the right there's an 8 amp reset button. But more importantly on the left you have your 120 volt outlets and you have two ports where you can link these generators together in tandem for increased power output. On the bottom you have the port where you will connect your propane hose and on the right you have your 12 volt DC outlet. On the right, they have something they call the easy start dial. And the way things are these days, you need to read a little bit of hieroglyphics to navigate it. But you will see your offsetting on the far left of the dial, and then you can rotate the dial between propane fuel and gasoline fuel. And to the right, there is your choke. So they have put the choke and all these different functions in one dial that they're calling the easy start dial. Jury's out on this, in my opinion, whether that is really a design advantage or a disadvantage. I guess as long as it's working, it's a big advantage. But I slightly question having the choke linked in on that dial. But hopefully it will work. So far, it has worked fine. And in the top middle, you'll see a couple of buttons. On the left, there's the economy button. This will put the generator into basically an economy mode and it will go into an idle and that's when it's going to be at its quietest. You can turn that off and it will idle up and become a good bit louder. On the right, you'll see the overload reset button. I'm a little bit worried about the longevity of these buttons, just based upon my previous experience with buttons like this, but hopefully they'll hold up okay. In the top center, there is a low oil warning light, and hopefully you will never see that illuminated. This is the good old fashioned pull start lawnmower style. There's no electric start in the generator. Now the benefit of having no electric start is there's no battery inside. So this is a pretty lightweight unit. This unit weighs less than 40 pounds. It's 39 pounds without fuel. So I would say most people can pick this up and carry it around pretty easily. However, I do miss having an electric start personally. And I want to point out on the top of the side panel you will see some more hieroglyphics and if you can decipher these hieroglyphics you can understand how to operate your unit. There's no actual English written on this sticker so I'm going to de-sticker this right now. Oh wow that's a sticker I think I would leave on there. So my wife wants me to leave this sticker on here but I am <laughs> vetoing my wife is very worried that we're going to be lost somewhere and if only we had this sticker, we would know what to do. Yep. I mean, can, can anybody make sense of that sticker? Okay. Late at night, listen to some Pink Floyd, stare at this sticker. 
see what happens. The most important sticker has to do with starting a generator indoors. You should never run these units indoors. So don't do this at home, kids. I'm doing this very briefly, purely for demonstration purposes. But it's actually very dangerous to run a generator indoors because of carbon monoxide. You could be dead in minutes. So let's crank it and see if we die in minutes. So it starts quickly and easily. So the engine was already warm, so I didn't even need to use the choke. I'm gonna remove another sticker. Turn that off. Let's come in and we'll look up top at the fuel cap. Unfortunately, there is no fuel gauge on this unit, so you're just going to have to guess with regard to how much fuel remains inside. This is where you will add gasoline. One nice feature of this fuel cap is that it is vented. You see there's a little switch on top that you can turn to on when you're running the generator and it will vent the fuel. So that's pretty nice. And there's a little panel on the top. You can slide this panel out and access the spark plug really easily. And inside you will find another warning sticker. They recommend changing the spark plug about once every 100 hours of use. So what I like about this unit, it's got a robust electricity output and it's very lightweight. Sure, the case is pretty much all plastic, but that keeps the weight low and it's surprisingly quiet, especially when it's at idle. So in economy mode at basically an idle speed, it's producing about 52 to 53 decibels of noise. I'm not running a NASA research lab here. I basically take a digital sound decibel meter, put it 25 feet away from the generator. I orient the exhaust away from the sound meter because that's what you would do in any kind of real world camping scenario and then do a little bit of light testing. Now, at full blast, running my wife's jet engine of a hair dryer, it produced around 66 decibels of noise. So the noise really jumps up quite a lot when the generator is placed under load. But in a lot of the situations when we will be using this unit, because we have a powerful solar package now, this will be simply backup for us and we will use it from time to time probably to top off our lithium ion batteries that we have in the trailer. So anytime that you want to change the oil, you just gotta pop out four screws on the side panel. This panel lifts off and beneath it you'll find the reservoir where you can insert fresh oil. On the back side, of course, is the exhaust. Not a whole lot to say here, except a good bit of heat does come off this exhaust, like all generators. And if you're running it anywhere near any kind of fuel supply or anything that's flammable, you need to be very careful about where you orient and point that exhaust. So now we're gonna connect our propane supply to the generator for the first time and run it off propane. You can see I've got the propane hose and regulator attached to basically a 20 pound propane tank. The fuel economy of this generator is pretty great. It holds only 1.1 gallon of gasoline. They claim it will run for, I think, 11 hours. And it is said that it will run around 23 hours off a 20 pound propane tank, assuming a 25% load. Push the hose in, you can feel it click into place. So now it's connected. So now I'm gonna open up our fuel supply and I'm gonna rotate. I think we need to pull the cord three or four times to prime it. This should allow some propane to flow into the unit. Now we're gonna give it a good pull. trying. At times like this, I miss my electric start. So if I kick it into eco mode, it idles down and gets a lot quieter.
So now the generator is running purely off of propane, and supposedly we can get 23 hours of life off one 20 pound tank. Alright, I'm gonna kill it. So there you have it, folks. We'll shut off this supply and remove this cord. Clean. And the reason a lot of people like to run generators off of propane is you don't have any of the concerns that you have with ethanol. Ethanol can cause a lot of problems in these small engines. So with gasoline, you have to really be conscientious and make sure that you don't leave old fuel in your unit. That fuel can turn into kind of a watery goo and it can really ruin the carburetor and the fuel lines in these small engines. With propane, you don't have any of those worries. Now you do have a lower power output. So instead of 1,850 running watts, you're gonna have around 1,650 if you're running off of propane. But you get the benefits if you don't have to carry gasoline and you have a very clean burning fuel in your generator. In this test, we're gonna cut straight to the chase and we're gonna see if this generator can power our 13,500 BTU air conditioner. We have one air conditioner in our Airstream and we have modified our air conditioner with what's called a soft start or an easy start device. The soft start device enables the air conditioner to start with much less electricity. I'm gonna prime it once or twice with a few pulls. Propane should be flowing into the unit now. Again, at times like this, I miss my electric start. What am I doing wrong here? I know. Oh, oh, Where are the stickers when I need them? So I think it just takes a minute for the propane to flow into the unit. So you have to prime it with several pulls to get the propane in there. You always want to start your generator without any kind of load present. And once you've got it started and running, then you can place it under load. I'm going to plug up our RV. Now see, this generator does not have an RV ready 30 amp outlet, unfortunately. So you're gonna have to use an adapter. Now I'm gonna turn off economy mode. Now let's go inside and take a look, and see what's happening. Since we're dealing with a smaller generator trying to power an RV air conditioner, it's always good practice to switch your refrigerator over to propano or propane. So this is not going to suck AC current from the generator. We're going to try to power the air conditioner using only the generator. This is an example of why I really don't like having to use these adapters. The weight of the cord is pulling out on the adapter and I think it's really pulling it loose from the generator. So I'm gonna try a different dog bone, but it's a slight hassle. I really would prefer to have a native 30 amp outlet. All right, it seems to be firmly seated there. You can see in the upper right control panel, the overload light is on. So we overloaded the generator. So, we'll shut it off. All right, so we've tried to run the air conditioner using only propane with mixed results, shall we say. Not so good results. It wasn't really able to do it. So we're gonna try now with gasoline and see if it's up to the task. Come on. So, started 
and now we are connected to our RV. So let's go inside, check the panel, and see what we can find. All right, so I'm gonna turn on the AC. Our house batteries are at 100%. Power draw coming from the shore has gone to over 2,000 watts. Yeah, overloaded. So I think the bottom line is, unless we're doing something wrong, which is certainly possible, we can't run our air conditioner just using this one unit, which is unfortunate. But I guess we found out now. So I dialed down the current limit on our Victron multi-control to 15 amps. And so we're bringing in 1600 watts shore power. Now let's see if I dial the current limit to 20 amps. If that makes a difference. So now it's it's working. Now the generator, which I'd like to call fact, Champy Junior, because the is mostly powering our air conditioning. We are drawing about 70 amps from our lithium on so okay, the battery. The compressor has just kicked in, and you can see our air conditioning unit is pulling about 1160 running watts, and we're getting about 1200 watts out of the generator. So it's taking that electricity from the generator, powering our air conditioner, and also keeping our house batteries at 100%. So it is working right now. So we should be able to run this off of propane. I'm gonna try it off propane next. All right. I'm gonna try it off propane. All right, guys, it's time for more testing in the real world. And what have we here? You know, a few years ago, I had really low self-esteem. I was distraught at my wit's end. I walked out to my garage and I looked at my generator cover. Learn to value yourself. After looking at this cover, I began to reflect and rethink my life. This generator cover saved my life. Thank you, Atima Corporation. I have now learned to value myself. And beneath the cover, we find the Loho Banana Yellow Generator. All right guys, so now it's time for yet another real world test. We have connected Champy Jr. here to one of our 30 pound aluminum propano tanks from our Airstream travel trailer. I have turned the easy start dial to propane and we've opened up the flow of propane. So this is that entertaining portion of the video where I tempt to pull start the generator. And I'm gonna gently pull the cord a few times just to prime it. And now I'm gonna get serious. Are we ready? Here it goes. Oh, come on, Champy Junior. Got my hopes up there for a minute. Politically incorrect exhaust fumes. Campy Jr. roars to life. No. Economy mode is engaged. I'm going to orient the exhaust out towards the marina. And by the way, we're in a pretty noisy environment here. 
I typically would not run a generator anywhere near an RV park like this. We're in a marina near an airport. <laughs> so I don't feel too bad about it for five minutes. So I'm going to now connect our RV to Champion Junior. And we're gonna go in and kick on the AC and the microwave oven. Let's see what happens. So now it's time for a microwave test. We're gonna try to microwave a cup of water off of propane. And let's turn on the microwave. You can hear the generator idled up. We're pulling almost 1,900 watts from the generator off of propane. It is running off propane now, and really it's only supposed to deliver 1,650 or so running watts. So I'm really kind of expecting it to overload. See, I have the multi-control limit set at 30 amps. So now you can see it's pulling uh, 1,900 watts from the generator. Microwave just completed. So we just successfully ran our microwave oven using propane and Champy Junior out there. So for my next magic trick, I'm going to attempt to run our air conditioner. Now this is the ultimate test, but again, our air conditioner has been modified with a soft start device. I'm gonna put fan on low and turn on the AC. And I'll crank it down to 50 degrees. Here comes the AC, it just cycled on. The fan is blowing. We are pulling around 700 watts. And in this case, shore power is the generator. So anything coming from this little red box is electricity coming from Champy Junior out there. So I'm gonna kick the fan up to high fan now. And let's see what happens. See, I don't think the compressor has engaged just yet. Yeah, we are getting cold air out of the air conditioner. So a couple of points I wanna make here. First of all, there is the roughly 200 watt difference when running off of propane versus running off gasoline. Sometimes that 200 watts could be the difference between running a microwave oven or running an air conditioning unit. So that's just something to keep in mind. You're gonna get a little bit more power off of gasoline. We are currently running purely off of propane. And I think because the compressor has not engaged on the air conditioner, uh, it's only drawing about 400 watts. So it's really no problem. With 2,500 starting watts and with our air conditioner modified with a soft start, this should be able to power our air conditioner. Right now, it is doing so, but again, at a pretty modest power draw. All right. Thank you, Champy Junior. So I would say that overall, the generator has passed the real world test. I will say the generator had no problem firing up my wife's jet engine of a hairdryer in the noise test that we performed. So that's just something to keep in mind. I do believe it's putting out the promised power output. Whether or not that will work for you remains to be seen. Now, if you really want to power an RV air conditioning unit, I would recommend that you get two of these bad boys. At a cost of less than 600 bucks a piece, they're a really good value option. So basically for about 1200 bucks, plus another 100 bucks or so for the parallel kit, you could be set up with something you could be confident would power your RV air conditioner off of propane. One other factor to keep in mind when looking at generators is your elevation. These lose power output as you go up in elevation. So if you are planning to do a lot of camping at higher elevation 
then you're gonna need more power. You're gonna need a bigger generator. So that's it guys, a look at the Champion dual fuel 2500 watt generator. I think this is a really interesting dare I say, exciting entry in this category. Overall, I like this unit very much. It's compact, saves a lot of space over our 3000 watt units. We've been very pleased with our Champion products and I feel that in this generation, they are improving and refining their design. Uh, we will have this linked below if you wanna go online and read more reviews from real life purchasers. You can click that link and it'll take you to the Amazon page for this unit. Yes, uh, we are affiliates of Amazon. You can find these units in our Amazon store at amazon.com slash shop slash long long honeymoon. And of course, there'll be plenty of links beneath this video. Till next time, I'm Sean. This has been Long Long Honeymoon, where we are bananas about RV camping. <laughs> what do we say on Long Long Honeymoon? We say lo lo ho. Thanks, guys. Warning, do not drink gasoline or inhale propane. Good advice. Warning, do not stare directly at sun while operating unit. Okay, good advice. All right guys, I've been talking to Vinny and Brian about the ceramic coating. There are still a few slots left. I have here a microfiber towel that I've soaked in some water. Now watch, I'm gonna clean our trailer. Give it a little bath. It's pollen season here in the south, and it's pretty dramatic how quickly and easily all of this gunk comes off the ceramic coated aluminum panels of our Airstream. Really loving the ceramic. So you still have to wash and wipe down your trailer from time to time. But it's so much easier when it's coated with ceramic glass.